Hi, I'm Dr. Greg Ellis. I want to talk about metabolism today, metabolic rates. One of the uh, commenters wrote in, what about these claims by the so-called health and fitness expert that if your caloric intake is too low, your body will go into starvation and survival mode? Now, the response to this is we have to do something that I call put it to the numbers. So what does starvation mode mean? We have no numbers. It's not telling us anything. It's just saying we're going to starve. Now, does that mean we're not going to lose any weight at all? Because we're just not eating enough food? And it, it, there's no balance here there. There's no way of telling what is actually happening. Now, when you reduce your calorie intake, there is several phases to the changes that occur and they adaptations in your metabolism that occur in response to the reduction in calories. So the first that occurs within two or three weeks is what I call active phase one. Active phase one. So there is, shall we call it a survival mode? There is a protective mechanism that starts and begins right away just with the reduction in calories. Like this could be severe or it could be mild, whatever. The body will automatically become more metabolically efficient. The cells will automatically adapt so that they can live on fewer calories than they were using before. That's the active phase one response. And that is independent of any body weight you lose. It goes on regardless of the body weight. Now, in the active, in, in the passive phase two, in passive phase two, the change or the reduction in calorie needs is obvious because you're carrying less weight around. So you don't have as much weight to carry around or as much work to do and your calorie needs drop because of that. So that is solely dependent on your body weight change. Now, you have a continuum of what happens metabolically depending on where you are on what I call the fat mass lean body mass continuum. So if you're very lean, very low in body fat on the one hand and another person is very obese on the other hand, the body has adaptations in place to drive each of you to return to your set point or your average fat mass lean body mass part. So for an overweight person, forces are pushing them back down. So it's much easier for them to lose weight at first. And for the lean, it's very hard for them to remain lean. Very, very difficult because the body doesn't want you there. It wants to go back to its set point. So forces are put into place. And there are specific metabolic adaptations which make the cell work much more efficiently particularly when you're lean. And when you get below, say, a midpoint, a, a place where you should, should be, like a set point. Like my set point's around 220, 225 pounds. When I'm there, I'm okay. I don't have to think about it. But I'm much fatter than I would like to be. But to try and go down to 185 or 190, where I'm just a couple of percent fat is just extremely difficult and takes a lot of work, a lot of exercise, really a lot of restriction in my food intake. And obviously I've done it, there's no question I've done, I've done it many times, but I also regained the weight many times. And when I get up to 225, I hit a wall, that's it. So on the other hand, when I went 265, I couldn't hold that. I couldn't stay there. It was just virtually impossible. I was eating 10,000 calories a day, and I, I just couldn't, could not hold it. Just could not eat that much food. So I had to stop, and I, I dropped right back down to my set point. So it's very, very difficult. So you have to make adjustments, and you have to put all this stuff to the numbers so you know what, what you're doing. In the Minnesota study, they had conscientious objectors, and they put them on a 
a calorie restricted diet equal to what the Europeans were exposed to during World War II. And the guy started off with 3,500 calories a day. Uh, their caloric needs dropped down to 1,590 after 26 weeks. And at that point, they ceased to lose weight. They quit losing weight at that point. They became so metabolically efficient that for each pound of weight that they lost, they had to decrease their calorie intake significantly as the weight would go off. Now, on the way back, your body wants to get those tissues back. It wants to get the fat mass back, and it wants to get the lean body mass back. Now, the fat mass is the strongest determiner of the extent of the metabolic adaptations, not the lean body mass. The body does not want to give up its fat. It wants to tenaciously hold on to it. So you, it's very difficult to get those last couple kilograms of fat off. Very difficult. So what happens as you begin to lose weight, <coughs> your body wants to get that weight back. So it induces hunger. Now the, the sensible thing to do here, if you've lost weight via a low fat diet, you're going to be very hungry and you're going to be depressed, and you're going to be lethargic. This is what happens to all the people who go on a low-fat diet. They get their weight off, and at this point, the, the, the body's just starting. It wants to go back. So everything is set into motion to make you fat again. Now, the other comment on this piece was, they even go on to claim your body will eat away muscle for energy and start storing fat. Sure, you'll lose some muscle tissue, but you'll lose mostly lean body mass. Things like your liver size will go down. Definitely your muscle size will go down. There's ways around this if you're smart. And of course, the low carbohydrate diet is the key because that keeps your protein intake up. That supplies what you need for your muscle. And the low carbohydrate diet is great for maintaining the muscle mass. Now, you're not going to just stop losing fat on a calorie reduced diet and then start storing things as fat. That's just not the way it works. Now, on the other hand, if you do the high fat, high, look, <laughs> stick with me. If you do the low carb diet versus the low fat diet, and that keeps fuel in your blood. And it's very difficult to drive food into your fat tissue. Food is driven into your fat tissue if you eat low fat because that sets up the process by which all the glucose you're getting is rapidly converted into body fat. So it depends what the hormonal and nutritional profile in your blood is. So your diet composition determines this. And then over the long haul, your body composition determines a lot of this stuff too. With what your fat mass is and your lean body mass. So put this thing to the numbers. Starvation mode doesn't mean you're going to just quit losing weight or nobody would ever lose weight because of the calorie reduction. But there is a, an active phase where the cells become more metabolically efficient. And then there is the passive phase where you're carrying less weight around. So all these things work together to determine what happens to your metabolism. So that's the answer to the metabolism question. I'm Dr. Greg Ellis.